Good evening and welcome. I'm Tiana Talib. Thank you for joining this evening commemorating the 100th anniversary of the New York's 369th Infantry. Tonight we are pleased to present a documentary film screening of Men of Bronze, a film about remarkable African-American men who fought in World War I. Directed by Harlem filmmaker William Miles, Men of Bronze is part of the moving image and recorded sound collection and projected on a 16 millimeter. Jeffrey T. Sammons, professor of history at New York University, will lead the post-film discussion with John H. Marrow, Jr. and Hamilton Fish V. The man that you saw in this film was 88 years old at the time that he was being interviewed. Uh, he lived to uh, the age of 103. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took a, a, a political turn uh, at a certain stage, very far to the right, and he, he became a, a very uh, well-known arch conservative and uh, was an opponent of Roosevelt in the New Deal and the 40s. And so he gets on national television and they say, well, you know, it's the 100th anniversary of one of the greatest presidents in the history of our country. Can you tell us something uh, about your experience with him? He said, yes. He said, he sold us out at Yalta. He betrayed us at Pearl Harbor. He, and he, and, you know, until they went to commercial, which of course was a little, <laughs> a little sooner. Uh, but he gave them a, a really uh, old-fashioned, uh, rip-roaring uh, attack on his old political adversary. So there is a benefit to outliving uh, your opponents. There's a hint, of, you know, that the that the 15th should have been in the 27th Division, which is the New York National Guard. Why don't you talk and then tell us about the 42nd Division, which they also could have been a part of. And the question is, uh, to whom will you be attached? To what division will you be attached? Obviously, the two options were uh, the 42nd Rainbow Division, to which the Alabamians were actually attached, so it's unfortunate the 15th was not attached to the Rainbow Division. They applied. And the response that they received was, black is not a color of the rainbow. And neither is white, OK? Um, <laughs> and this extraordinary book of, written by truth tellers um, reminds us uh, of the continuing set of obstacles um, that are constantly uh, put up uh, in the path of people who are uh, seeking racial equality and justice. The New York National Guard leadership fought that uh, law tooth and nail. And one of the ways that they blocked the establishment of a regiment that was supposed to come into existence in three months from uh, the law's authorization was to deny or to fail every black who came up for the officer exam. In some respects, the 15th was very fortunate to have a commander if he had to be white. Thank God they got Hayward, number one, because he did believe in equality uh, for African Americans. He believed specifically that they should have the right to prove they were as patriotic as anyone else. This will mean America was fighting a number of different wars. And one of the wars it was fighting was to make sure that blacks stayed in their place. Uh, the 1925 War College report on the performance of black soldiers in World War I, in which they, it, it's completely, how do I explain when you read something and you're so infuriated at it because it's nothing but a pack of lies? Um, it explains that no. black soldiers, yeah, black soldiers can't fight at night. Well, all those combats we're talking about of Henry Johnson and Butler. Butler, these are combats at night. That's the way you fought on the Western Front. And the worst part of it is that 1925 document which says that Black soldiers didn't show initiative. Everything, their brains were smaller. Every racist statement you can imagine is piled into that report. And when they finish it, they basically say, don't waste your time on any African or black soldiers being combat soldiers. Um, that's what colors the beginning of World War II.
Nicholas Fish named his first son Hamilton for Alexander Hamilton. They were very, very good friends, Nicholas Fish and Alexander Hamilton. So here we have somebody who's linked to Hamilton with us. Thank you. <laughs> but I can't, I can't afford a ticket to the show. <laughs> I tried already. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. That concludes our program. Please join us in the lobby for a book signing. Thank you.